All right, everybody, we've got a geomagnetic uptick going on at, as we make the video. And uh, we're expecting the coronal mass ejection strike to be starting any moment now. So let's take a look at the geospace around planet Earth first. Here are the last four hours of magnetohydrodynamic pressure. So we just did see a little uptick here. It does not look like the leading edge of the coronal mass ejection has arrived yet. But you're going to see a massive uptick in pressure right around the middle of this video here. Here comes this huge pressure uptick on our geospace magnetosphere movie. Up just right at the end of the video, it looks like. It's a mild uptick. All right. Coronal mass ejection strike not here yet. That's the word on the street. And this video was originally recorded. Make sure you watch our Twitch our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash smashomash. Here's Earth's magnetic moment from the ground since we showed you Earth's magnetic moment from space. Magnetism. It's kind of important. It's important in terms of solar features, which we'll get to. Things like sunspots, coronal holes, and the heliospheric current sheet, which gives us crazy insight into solar activity. Anyway, that's the last four hours of Earth magnetic moment from the ground. We can expect a KP6 or possibly even a KP7 as the coronal mass ejection expected to strike today is going to be a rather direct hit. So don't be surprised to see this up here. NOAA's forecast is for up here. KP6. I'm saying the possibility of a KP7 is certainly there. I'm expecting the CME strike to last about eight hours. Let's take a look at the real-time solar wind here. And there we've got this mild uptick happening recently in the solar wind velocity. Some shifts in the BTBZ, which is this top pane. Again, we can expect a significant signal here when we see the CME strike, meaning it hasn't happened yet. So we may have to do a second video later today about this. But that's the current conditions. Current conditions are about 460 kilometers per second for the solar wind velocity, solar wind density about 10 and a half. We can expect to see a spike of like 50, maybe even 70 protons per cubic centimeter for the solar wind density when the CME strike arrives. So what we'll be looking for here, folks, is a big uptick in the solar wind velocity, the solar wind density, and some sort of a signal in the plasma temperature all at the same time. It could be a downtick or an uptick. Sometimes CMEs are colder than the background solar wind. Let's continue on with some additional data points here. No, no relativistic particles showing up here in the proton flux. The flare profile has gone up. We'll get to it in a moment. Goes magnetometers here showing some spiky readings. That could be the magnetic field ahead of the coronal mass ejection. Don't be surprised if it is. It's kind of likely as any moment we could expect the strike. So here's the heliospheric current sheet. The top view ecliptic plane field plot. Earth is in a North Pole current sheet. Nothing too exciting to write about there. Here's the line of sight view. North Pole current sheet for the win. Next, we'll move on to coronal holes. Here's our coronal hole line of sight plot. We've got some well-defined North Pole-oriented coronal holes facing Earth. We featured these in yesterday's thumbnail on YouTube. Keep in mind this data is 1 hour and 42 minutes old from when we recorded the video and can change with basically no warning. Next, looking at it visually here, 90, 193 angstroms from the SDO. See that calibration move going on there? That is to ensure that the SDO is pointed directly at the center of the solar disk. Well-defined North Pole coronal holes right in the earthly facing zone. We can expect some high-speed wind from them in about three days. And let's move on to look at sunspots. We've got three groups worth noting here. 2988, 2989, which has grown since yesterday, and 2990, which should have already been named. It's well past its 12 hours of exhibiting umbrae. This is an alpha class. This is certainly beta class, so the most likely place to see major flares is from sunspot 2989. It's quite magnetically complex, and you can see the likelihood of solar flares going up way, way up here to all the way to 63% there. Also, the X-ray profile in general has gone up to approaching a C-class background level. Next, looking at these sunspots, and you can see uh, some growth here, especially from sunspot 2989. 
2988, pretty uneventful. 2990, pretty uneventful. 2989 is the sunspot to keep an eye on. And when I say eye on, our regular viewers get it. So here's 2990. It still only looks like it's alpha class to me. We'll let that play through a second time. And then we'll take a look at it in 171 angstroms. This is 1,700 angstroms from the SDO. 1,700 angstroms, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, perhaps. That is ionized iron, very hot iron gas. And you can see that white area, that is a lot of the gas. These dark areas here are a very low amount of that ionized iron. I think it's iron 9. 10 times ionized iron, something like that. I don't memorize the number of electrons. Anyway, sunspot 2989 is quite complex. So this is uh, definitely the most interesting portion of the Earth-facing solar disk at the moment. Here's 2988, which is this one out here, and 2989 in 171 angstroms. We're seeing an additional coronal mass ejection coming out of the area behind Sunspot 2989. That's three days in a row. We'll cover that in our bonus feature segment. By the way, did you know we're also putting up exclusive content on BitChute? Yeah, bitshoot.com slash smashamash. Thanks to our BitChute followers. It's been very stagnant over there. I don't know what's going on with BitChute. Our view count has dropped by 80% in the past couple of weeks. We're also putting up content on Twitch, twitch.tv slash smashomash. It's just a spectacular live streaming location for the Smash News Network. Least busted name in news. Also, make sure you visit our own websites like smashomash.com slash smash team. If you want to see all the content, click on posts. If you want to support the channel, become a member of the Smash team. The gold annual paid up subscription is the best value as you get complimentary merch. Would you like your own smashamash.com, your, your own at smashamash.com email address? Well, become a member of the Smash team at the gold level. And you can have your own email address with our domain. So welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Watch out our very, very dangerous links. In a time when disinformation and propaganda are considered, quote, the science, end quote, and facts and reality are considered misinformation, smashamash.com doesn't care at all about that. Our finest days lie ahead. And let's move on to space weather. You can see, again, the X-ray profile here rising up to a C-class background level. That's not even a flare. That's just the X-ray output. So solar activity not dropping by any reasonable measure as solar cycle 25 is ramping up like two years ahead of schedule. And let's take a look at the closest star here, El Sol, Helios. The Sun, the local yellow dwarf. 131 angstroms is one of the two best wavelengths to view solar flares. The other is 94 angstroms. And you're going to see a general brightening here. Again, the most likely place to see a major flare is most certainly from sunspot 2989. We've got some more imagery for you. We had a great coronal mass ejection that occurred yesterday. Shout out to Sugas. So here's a star chart. There's a lovely planetary pile up happening in the morning. If you're up before dawn, you may see Saturn, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter all rising ahead of the sun. It's a great planetary alignment going on at the moment. Just spectacular. By the way, that's in-the-sky.org if you want to make your own star chart. This is the all-sky chart. Mine faces the south as I face the south when I make these videos. And so does my sofa. Here's a solar system forecast as we're approaching another full moon. Let's advance this one week. And there's where things will be on the 24th, on the 21st. April 21st, we will have a gibbous waning. And we'll close out the video with some coronagraph imagery, some spectacular coronal mass ejections once again. So here's the view from Stereo A's coronagraph and the Soho Lasco C3 located at Lagrange 1. 
Stereo A over here, located at Lagrange 5, which puts the Earth off to your right. So yesterday we said that this filament down here is set to eject. It's not really done with that process yet, and we see a far side coronal mass ejection, quite a spectacular one, quite a high speed. And this may look like a halo ejection from the perspective of the Soho Lasco C3, but that's on the opposite side of the sun. So there's a little bit of ejecta here, uh, sort of coming out of the south. That's sort of a low speed stream ejection. But the real CME is on the far side, as you can see there. And we'll let that play through there. We had to go back a lot of frames to get all that imagery for you there, folks. And if you're wondering what that bright area is over here, that is Jupiter on the Stereo A coronagraph. We'll let that play through one more time before we close out this thing. Very significant far side coronal mass ejection there. Again, expect the arrival of one happening at any moment here on Earth. We may see the aurora at mid latitudes from this one. It is a direct strike more or less. So it should be interesting. We're hoping power grids don't shut down and we're hoping that civilization doesn't collapse to any larger extent than it already has. So thanks for tuning in folks. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. Press like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Press that share button and tell your friends and foes about us. In the meantime, may that solar wind be at your back. And I've been your host Dan aka Smash O Mash signing off. <laughs>